Bottle Ned with a special bot rescue operation episode where we're gonna remove a shit ton of bottles buried around the base of a giant tree before the roots have a chance to grow through them and break them. Bottles buried near big trees are all fated to die. Over time, tree roots will grow towards them, around them, eventually finding their way into them through the neck and then grow and expand until the bottle pops. Right. Digging the West with Bottle Net. Wanna film me or? Huh? I'll film you. You're trying to film me? Oh, you thought, oh, you thought this was an AVD, huh? That's, That's not AVD. This is already AVD. There's a square, and there's a ring of dirt. See the dirt? Yeah, but it's just tweakers, man. Well, that's that's all topsoil. Brent, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to learn more about soil is what you need. You know, someone needs to teach you. <laughs> a little guy trying to trip me. Didn't even get me, and I was, full, I was holding a boat. What is it a utility though, or is it a pit? You just like a foot down. Ooh, yeah, 20th century. Oh, oh. You found yourself a rust hole. Demo John? Demo, Demi Moore. Looks like an old one, bubbles, huh? Um, it might be a turn of the century one, but these hung around. When you were kind of new at probing, these are the holes that you find usually. They're, they're like the when you're experienced, <laughs> these are the holes that you miss. Oh, I think it's the opposite. Wait, did you probe this lot like a it's, couple days ago? No, I, I stopped when I probed the real hole over there. So. Well, go dig your real hole. Ned, check it out. You just dug this up. Oh, it's a low splash. That was discontinued in what, 86, 87? Is this your attempt at humor? <laughs> Is that your attempt at a bottle joke? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Not all roots are that easy to break. Damn. Dude, would you get your 20th century away? Oh, wait. Oh, that's that's not 20th century. Okay. All right. <laughs> you Fine, uh, yeah, you know what you're doing or a little bit sometimes. Think Every once in a great while. Good age. Bubba ah, Bennington. Yeah. You know, actually, that is weird because I thought, I thought a, another digger had dug into this. I'm actually thinking that somebody made some drugs here using a portable heater wick thing and a flame scissors hammer flame oh there's hair on it a sporal alcohol looks like someone buried the evidence of their drug lab so we thought it was an abd but it's actually a crack crankster yeah <laughs> you know how much they like to dig holes too thought it was a hole dug by bottle people but it's actually uh a hole dug by a tweaker. Just happened to dig into the top of this outhouse hole. They, they knew. Ned, What's that? It's a, it's a track off a barn door that rolls back and forth. Oh, bars. with a star. In, yeah, that's cool design on it. A star. The area we're digging is right next to where a horse stable is shown on the 1890s Sanborn fire insurance map. Starting in the second half of the 19th century, the Sanborn Paris Map Company mapped the location, shape, and dimensions of all major structures in most American towns and cities to provide accurate information of what insurance companies were liable for in the event of a fire. Okay, everybody, get away from my hole. Oh, it's mine, it's mine. Come on, come on. Medicines, look, 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 a whiskey. Oh my God, we're gonna dig it out. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Let me videotape and you actually get something yeah, done. Let's, yeah, let's go, come on. 
This is the Utah ukulele. <laughs> Ugly dirt. <laughs> it just moved there, bub. Did it? Okay. It's broken. Top's gone. Is it's it? a fucking base embossed oh. bitters with that hydro. Oh, uh, yeah. oh. That's what it is. Oh, God darn it. Yep, that's a nice orange amber. <laughs> Here's a green one we dug. Oh my God. Really green? We got a green bottle. It's green. Hey man, respect the history. So we have turn of the century by Linea water. There's lots of um, hot springs in California. That was the, uh, the central point of Western hot spring activity where people would go to these resorts and drink healing waters from the springs, California, Oregon, you know, um, some other ones probably in Nevada, Utah, but a lot of them were in Lake County, California. Americans currently spend $16 billion a year on buying bottled water. In today's holistic health industry, you hear a lot of people raving about the benefits of mineralized fresh spring water how it can promote health, maybe even cure disease. You might think that this is a modern day fad perpetuated by those long haired, energetic healer, neo hippie yoga people that can be found at tea houses and jam band music festivals across the country. In fact, the bottled water health craze has been around a lot longer than a lot of people might know. Natural mineral water was one of the most popular non-alcoholic beverages of the 19th century West. Let's just take a moment to enjoy that bot. Oh yeah. In addition, water wellness was all the rage among the leisure class, and spa villages sprang up around water springs across the West, from Nevada to Napa County, California to Eastern Oregon. In order to serve their many visitors, Large hotels, dining halls, bathhouses, gardens, and pavilions were situated around mineral springs allowing guests to luxuriate as they took the waters, which were advertised to cure everything from tuberculosis, to cancer, to female complaints, to hiccups. Water springs resorts were also seen as an escape from the stresses of increasingly industrialized cities an escape only afforded by the upper classes. Later on in the 20th century, with the invention of vaccines for tuberculosis and polio, the water cure lost popularity, and the idea of spending the weekend at a mineral springs further went out of style as the automobile gained popularity and opened up a wider variety of travel options for excursionists. Yeah, what age is this? You're the expert. Okay, nothing like digging a 1870s property and digging this age behind it, but hey, it's still history. Okay, here's another. Oh, it looks like a, uh, oh, that's a uh, citrate of magnesia. Or another bottle for stomach cramps. It's probably a Western blown one. Ah, San Francisco and Pacific Glassworks. Turn of the century, maybe late 1890s. Makes sense something like this would be in a privy because uh, people were drinking this, taking a dump, their stomach hurt. Some citrate of magnesia, later called milk of magnesia, would have helped them. Also what was in there was a syrup of figs. It's another thing for your upset stomach, fig syrup, a laxative. Okay, it appears we have a toothpaste lid. Oh no, it's a toothpaste pot. Pot. It's a pot, I say. Toothpaste or a cold cream. Oh my God, this smells so tight. Or one of those, yeah, no, it's, it could be a cherry toothpaste pot. These were really popular pots for ointment. Facial cream, complexion. Petroleum cream. Hmm. It's a little older. 
It's not quite turn of the century. It's more like early 1890s, you know. The... Oh, yeah, that's a big dash. Yeah. Okay, we have some bone here. Very typical, cuts of bone. Oh, cool. Eaten well. And then we have some kind of iron stone. Let's see if we can get that out here. <sighs> Let's see, what age is this? England, see that would be a turn of the century mark on that one, John Madden, very classic English stamp. Look at this, we got, oop, what we got here? Yep, here's a horseshoe. There was a livery stable on the map. This guy had his own horse. So there we go, there's a shoe. Oh, there's a little miniature, uh, Cologne, Florida water. Murray and Layman. Layman. New York City. Yeah. In case you're wondering, I stabbed my hand, went to the emergency room, stabbed it with a piece of ironstone china, of course, so. It's a furniture reviver. Cool. Merton and Moffat. This is a Western bottle for furniture. <laughs> furniture polish. Nice. Yeah. I think it's a pretty good, pretty good condition. Western blown, turn of the century. Furniture polish bottle. You can tell this guy was kind of living large, you know, had leisure time to clean his furniture, actually cared enough. Western bottle. Okay, looks like we have a baby medicine bottle. This was a Castoria. It was advertised as being free of opium, natural remedy for babies. Alrighty then, we've got some lamps that they dropped into the privy by accident taking a dump at night, oil burning lamp. That's the part that actually held the oil. Then you had the uh, chimney above it. Maybe this thing right there, that's part of the chimney. Using Brent's special extraction apparatus. Got some window pane down here. Might have an extract from hell. Yeah. Pitchlers? No, these are just unembossed. That's why they're from hell. Flavoring extract for cooking. Do you even know how to cook? Yeah, dude. I make scrambled eggs all the time. All right, what's that? Clock parts. Clock? Yeah, it's the back of a clock. The wood's all gone. But that's it. You see the clock gears? A little bit of gears. Oh, yeah. You clean it. There's probably a name on it and a patent name by somebody. Waltham Clock Company. Does it say it? No. Ah, you're just clairvoyant. You know. The psychic digger. There's some plates down here. Got a big piece of rock that they threw into as a trash compactor. Packing the garbage right here. Big rock. Slayer's about 1900, turn of the century. Woo. Window pane in the ass. Uh, this plate just kung fu like in between this rock and this bone. Look at that. It's like, hoi, hoi, ho, ho. Someone's like, <laughs> it's like a throwing star. <laughs> it's cool. It's in the position that someone threw it 110, 120 years ago. Hoi, All right, we got three of these sexy Bahama mamas in here for you, ready for extraction, for your viewing pleasure. We have first, show them what the prize is. Well, the first thing we have is the Ayers Cherry Pectoral. Oh, 
Ooh, hailing from Lowell, Massachusetts, the cherry pectoral is one of the most popular medicines of the 19th century. Cherry pectoral. Mmm. Tooled top, about 1895 on that one. Next we have, uh, 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 we don't know what it is. Uh, 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 I shouldn't even be doing this, but it's so new, it doesn't matter. Uh, a beer bottle with a bizarre top, might be a, a Bud, Budweiser bottle, let's check. No, just some concentric circles and numbers on the bottom. Hmm. Also from the toyne of the century, Kind of a different beer bottle. It's a very, very light aqua. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely light aqua. Okay. The older style of that comes with a sharper lip and an applied top. This would be a tooled top, turn of the century version. And now we have what looks like maybe a Scott's emulsion. <laughs> no, it's a Dr. Miles new heart cure. Cool. So these are some um, pretty prolific turn of the century American bottles, patent medicine, and beer. It's fun to pull them out though, man. So you'll notice all these roots here. Here's a little factoid that's slightly disturbing. Eventually, these roots will grow into the lips of the bottles and expand, get bigger, and break the bottle. This happens all the time. I've seen a few in here that are broken, that have already been broken that way. So rescue the bot, man. Bots won't last forever in the ground when you got roots all around. For your viewing pleasure, BottleNet presents Turn of the Century Log Jam. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Dr. Miles, restorative nervine. Restores the nerves for those shot nerves. Okay. Uh, generic med, aqua. <laughs> Whoa, apothecary bottle from a drugstore, local, no writing. And uh, Phillips Milk of Magnesia in a beautiful aqua. Phillips, let's clean that off for you. Phillips Milk of Magnesia for the stomach. The later ones come blue and screw top. Mm. A light cornflower blue. Looks like a Lydia. Oh, I got your girlfriend in the hole down here, Brent. <clears throat> Lydia E. Pinkham's vegetable compound. I think it's like a five-footer. Oh. Based on that one that we sank the six-footer. Look, Brent. Here's a fun night with Lydia E. Pinkham's vegetable compound. Gotta turn the century bottle. Whoa, look at that ammonia. That was kind of cool. There's a throwback right there. Whoa, it says something weird on the base, too. Funk. That's a good one. What the hell? Yeah, it's got a strange thing on the base. Uh, plots? Plots? Something disinfectant. Huh. So that'd be like a ammonia bleach, something. The household disinfectant. That's different. Chlora, chlorophate. What? Really? Something chlora something household disinfectant. Chlorine, right? Tools or That's tool. Is it a toy? Oh yeah. So it's turn of the century, maybe 1896. I'm gonna say 1897, April. I say 1908. No, no, not that. Is not quite. Fort? Well, nothing like digging behind an 1870 house, but finding 1905. Getting to the bottom, getting that rust, rusty 1905. 
not even touching the 19th century really maybe late 1890s if we're lucky oh where is that old hole oh where what'd you do oh a little boo-boo <laughs> you call that a cut this is a cut let me see oh, oh. wait wait brent brent this is your one last chance to find a 19th century bottle today. I exposed it all for you. Oh, God. Oh, Brent, what did you do? Let's get out of here. Oh. My name is Bartleman. Oh, yes, I said my name is Bartleman. I didn't say my name was Brothel Ned, nor is it Bobble Ned. Yes, it's Bottle Ned. That's what I Bottle said. Bottle Ned here in Los Angeles, trying to escape LA, get to a dig. I'm gonna drive all night and meet Barney Brent because he probed another hole on that lot with a big turn pit underneath the tree. So it's gonna be rough. I gotta drive all night and I'm gonna sleep in a bush close to the site where uh, this dig's gonna be take, taking place at 8 a.m. Tomorrow morning, it's already sunset. <sighs> okay, it's 4.30 a.m. I just got to Brent's stupid dig site. Um, boy, the dig starts at eight, so that means I have three and a half hours to find somewhere to sleep. So I'm gonna see if I can find a bush somewhere to pass out in and hope that I don't get uh, killed in my sleep. Okay, so here's the dumpster. Good spot to get over the fence here. Uh-oh. Oh. Guess I won't be sleeping naked. Here goes the uh, blanket and pillows. Oh. And here goes me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this light off. I'm just uh, checking the site to make sure there's no other homeless people trying to sleep here. Wouldn't want to uh, invade someone's territory and piss someone off. Okay, I found the place I'm gonna sleep. It's in a nice little corner tucked away. Uh, it's, I don't smell any human crap. I surrounded myself with trash bags. It's a good little trick. Disguise yourself as garbage. Okay, um, another good idea, another good thing is that I have the, uh, the world's stupidest knife to defend myself with, just in case, just in case the shiznit gets real, so, um, yeah, hopefully I won't have to use this, uh, amazing contraption, uh, uh. at least it's got my name on it, Ned, god, a stupid dig better be worth it, whoa, Okay, wish me luck. Good night. No comment. Apparently there's like a strange species of bird living in this tree. Okay. Someone's up there, man. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, what a, what a beautiful morning. The convenient part about this is I don't have to walk to the bathroom. Hey, you dick. <laughs> The good news is I didn't get gasoline poured on me in the middle of the night by somebody and lit on fire. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> okay, everybody, today we're gonna teach you how to use a backhoe, okay? It's an excavator. Right. Excavator. Uh, excavator. All right, um, first you do the uh, boom up. Boom no, that's stick side. out. Stick out. Stick, stick. in. Um, it's a very scary time in operator's lives. Boom goes down. 
boom goes out, boom goes down a little bit, boom, oh, boom hits you in the window. Mucho trabajo. Poco dinero. Mucho trabajo. Poco dinero. Mucho trabajo. Poco dinero. Lazy people digging with an excavator. Here we have Sir Hacks a lot opening up. Uh, what could unfortunately be a 1920s hole. Uh, oh God. Okay, the big reveal. What is it? Come on, man. Oh, God, you suck. You suck, Brent. You, God, take that and shove it up your freaking Calico orange flavor guard. Oh, this is bad. This is we, 50s. We got Thunderbirded. No, that's not 50s. That's newer. That's like 70s. Oh, Or cool. 60s, maybe. 18 or 19? Let me see a long yeah. Let's make sure it's not a big sinker. Because we're feeling this Pong. back in it quick. All right, do I watch Brent whack it or return to my bush? Let's I think there's only one option there. Good option. See ya. Ugh. Digging ain't easy.